flying 10 or 12 hours a day is uh, mentally taxing as well as physically taxing. And for a younger pilot, like when I first started, I couldn't fly all day long and be sharp like I can today. And also at the beginning of the season, it takes a little bit before you're ready to go all day long because you have to be mentally fresh from the first time you fire up in the morning until you shut it down in the afternoon because a mistake can happen at any time. And over the years, I've developed the uh, flying stamina where you can go all day long. And at the end of the day, actually some days, it's cooling off and I'm more refreshed at the end. My wife asked, you know, how can you be not so tired? I said, well, it's beautiful out there right now. The flying's great and it's fun and it gives you a second wind kind of. Roland Dusters, a third generation family owned crop dusting business working on and above the early Spanish land grant of Lasara, Texas. Blaine Roland and eldest son AJ are the current operators of this nestled hangar in Willacy County. AJ serves as the lead airplane mechanic and general manager for the company while finishing up his AMP certification and pilot's license training, as Blaine does the bulk of the flying. With over 25,000 flight hours logged and 30 years of experience, Blaine's trajectory was carved on from an early age. I got started in the flying business because my dad had done it, my grandfather had done it. Oh, about my sophomore year in college, it just hit me that this is what I want to do for a living. And uh, so I started flying in 85 and started spraying in 1990. So this has been a family business for over 60 years now. Started by my grandfather in 1946. And what was your grandfather's name? His name was uh, Bernard Strauss Roland I. And then your dad? Bernard Strauss Roland II. And you? Blaine Curtis Roland. The flying is the best part of it. I love the business, but without the flying, uh, I wouldn't be in it because that's what keeps you coming in every single day is being able to get in this airplane and do what we do. And helping farmers, of course, too. You know, tell me a little bit about, there's so many things in this world about how spraying is bad, but really it's, it's crucial almost for these farmers, especially in our location. So tell us, um, how do the farmers rely on you? The farmers rely on us because we can get the job done quickly, safely, and efficiently. And all of these jobs that uh, we do, they're essential. A farmer's not gonna spend money unless he has to. So crops right. aren't being treated just to be treated. There's a reason for it and we're only applying EPA approved products that are gonna help produce safe and uh, abundant food sources. So Blaine, you know, we see these crop dusters fly down low, then they go back up high, but we're really still at a distance when we see this. So now that we're up close and personal, we see that this is more than just your typical plane that we see flying that transports passengers. So tell us a little bit about these nozzles, the wings, how does this all differ from a regular plane? As far as the wings go, they're about the same as the regular airplane. You have your control surfaces, flaps, your ailerons, but now here we're looking at the boom where we have our nozzles on the boom and this is where the spray will be coming out and they're adjustable to help eliminate drift and to accommodate different volumes and this is the big difference uh, on the trailing edge of the wing between a regular passenger airplane is our boom and nozzle setup. And so what comes out of here? I mean, I'm assuming stuff to help the crops grow, but someone at home watching may not know what exactly comes out of here. What different products do you use? We use everything from insecticides, growth regulators, herbicides, and just a lot of uh, fertilizer as well. Every time we're spraying it, it, it's not a pesticide. It could be a fertilizer because we do a lot of uh, aerial applications where we're just enhancing the growth of the plant. Yeah, who are we? 
to have the spray boom where the chemicals and the uh, fertilizers travel down the boom and then come to these nozzles. These nozzles have valves on them. They can be turned off or on depending on the volumes you need. We have different orifices on the nozzles and also we have swivels here that we can adjust them to produce smaller or larger droplets depending on the job and the uh, conditions that we're flying in. And these nozzles here are very specific to the newer, faster airplanes. They allow us to fly at the speeds we work at now and get uh, less drift than the older technology that we used back in the uh, 80s and early 90s. This is the hopper of the airplane and this is where we put all of our liquid or dry chemicals or fertilizers. This airplane is a 602 and it holds 630 gallons of liquid and approximately 5,000 pounds of uh, dry material if we're doing dry applications. This fiberglass hopper has markings on the outside that uh, will give us a reading of how many gallons we have on in here and it starts out at 475 and gradually comes up to 625 and totally full this hopper will hold about 630 gallons and so that handle right there is that where we lift up and we this pour here is, is actually the latch to keep it closed when we're working and you just bring that back and this lid opens up for cleaning or loading and especially when we're putting our dry products out we uh, auger the uh, whether it's affligard or fertilizer directly into the hopper and this hopper holds 600 gallons, like I said, and it's got a rinse system to where we can uh, put about 30 gallons of water in it after the job. And that way we can get rid of the extra chemical sure on the crop. So that way we're not uh, contaminating a different area. We, we put it out over the crop that we just sprayed. And what about that? This here is the light bar. This is part of the GPS system. And this gives me all the information I need to stay straight on the field it gives me parameters like uh, swath number, uh, how fast I'm going, how far I am off the center line, and also gives me the flow of how much chemical is coming out so I can verify that uh, I'm putting out the correct amount of chemical. I am Tracy Claypack. Jeff and I have been farming for about 38 years. Our boys came in to farm with us in 06, and Capital Farm Credit was able to work with us and help us expand our business. My husband and boys are farming land that they have farmed for the last four generations. Capital Farm Credit has been there for us, not only just with the lending and helping us grow, they actually know what farmers need. Our future plans are to continue working with Capital Farm Credit and make our future better. And so now I'm looking in the cockpit. Does this cockpit resemble, you know, a plane we take from here to Houston or wherever we may be flying, or is this completely different? No, there are a lot of similarities between all airplanes. You have fuel gauges, pressure gauges, you've got your uh, engine parameters, torque, speed, temperatures. So all of that is pretty standard. Now what we have different in this cockpit is uh, we've got the uh, 
screen, my touch screen that will allow me to set up the different parameters I'm using when I'm flying, how much water we're putting out our swath width, and it also allows me to uh, input latitude and longitude so I can use this to VFR na navigate. You even have a gas pedal there, so put the pedal to the middle, kind of yes. like I drive. Kind of. If you ask my friends how I drive, they refuse to get in the car with me. So I'd hate to see how I drive an airplane. Well, then that, that would be good. Uh, with one of these, you could uh, <laughs> issue these helmets to your passengers. I've been told a couple times I need to wear a helmet when I drive, so. The newer airplanes have air conditioners. We have radios in here to talk to other airplanes and also towers. We can go into fully controlled airports. I have uh, satellite radio in here oh. that uh, helps the day go by. This is our, our office. We spend between 500 and 1,000 hours a year in here, so you need to be comfortable. So Blaine, we see that your son AJ has graced us with his presence today, and AJ plays a crucial part in your business. This is my oldest son, AJ Rowland. He's about to be 25, and he's almost completed with the certification for AMP airplane mechanic, and uh, we're very lucky to have him here. When my dad passed away in April, AJ left the job he was at to come here full time and it's been a huge, huge blessing for us to have him here. It takes a lot of the load off of my shoulders and uh, we're very lucky to have him here. AJ, tell us um, how important is it to you to help your dad out in the business? Oh, it's, it's a, I take very good pleasure in helping him taking some weight off of his shoulders, making sure these airplanes that we're working around all day long are safe for them to be flying and just doing as much as I can to help out around here. Seems like every day, uh, I guess you could say an airplane requires a lot more mechanical work than a vehicle does. So are your hands busy every day in the plane and the engines? Uh, not every day. These planes fly about 30 to 40 hours in the air weekly and uh, they go through 100 hour inspections, 300 hour inspections and then annual inspections. So every two and a half to three weeks we have to put these things down for, annual, uh, for preventative maintenance, go through the engines, go through all the controls. Uh, lubrications, just whatever, th anything that needs to be done, we tear, take care of it at that time and so it's, it's pretty time consuming. So tell us, um, I know that a lot of times businesses that are family units that run together because of family, there sometimes can be rifts. Do you and your dad always see eye to eye or are there sometimes points where y'all just want to walk away from each other or fly away from each other? <laughs> on, on my side, he's dragging me sometimes begrudgingly with into new technology and uh, I leave that up to him because I know he's got the best interest of the business in heart and it's something that's got to be done and typically he's gonna we're gonna do what he recommends because uh, I don't see things the the way a younger mind does and sometimes I need to so that that's that's a good part of this keep the business younger and growing and he may have a different personality or a different uh, idea of what I think we need to do but uh, I hope that I'm open-minded enough to realize that uh, he knows some things that I just don't know and I don't have the time to learn now. And that's something, you know, the younger generation does bring to today's society and to businesses is their knowledge of technology and all the powerful things that it can do. So with that said, AJ, do you ever see eye to eye with your dad? I'd say about 90% of the time we're, we're seeing eye to eye, another 10% where we disagree on some things, but at the end of the day, uh, we go home and shake it off. and try to see eye to eye the next day. Most people work a regular eight to five job and they don't get to see their dad as much as I get to right here. And it's just a pleasure just to come and work with him every day and I enjoy the heck out of it. Many farmers rely on Blaine Spring services for their crops. With over 29 seasons flown thus far and plans to keep on going, a viewpoint Blaine stresses over is the recognition received or lack thereof. With the pilot usually getting most of the praise, the real truth is that without their support teams on the ground, none of what they do would be possible. The ground crew and office personnel help keep the pilots in the air and the focus in the cockpits. On April 9th of this year, Blaine's father was killed in a plane crash while spraying. The next day, they had two airplanes from a friend ready to take over the workload. Throughout the next four months, they had help from 12 different pilots flying 10 different airplanes. Every applicator in the valley either helped them or offered to do so. They all pulled together as a family and industry, managing to get through that tough season. With an industry filled with such great people, Blaine is honored to be a part of it all.
The weekend is calling. This season, answer that call by taking aim at owning your very own hunting ranch. There's nothing better than spending the cool autumn days surrounded by the great outdoors. Find a little spot in rural Texas and let us finance your place in the country. Internet is more than just uploads and downloads. It's about connecting people. VTX1 Companies is here for you, bringing communities closer together. VTX1 has connected customers for almost 70 years. Our internet service spans across South Texas to some of the most remote areas. Faster wireless service is now available in Progresso, Lozano, Rangerville, and Rancho Viejo. Call 1-800-446-2031 or visit vtx1.net to find out more. America's favorite potato chip lays, most Gerber baby food, and the vegetables in your Campbell's soups mostly start in the Rio Grande Valley with Jack Wallace of Wallace Farms. Jack runs a large operation growing several different vegetables that we use on a daily basis. But with an operation this large, it takes several hands to keep the wheels in motion, including the services of dusters like Blaine. Every time you put a bit of lace potato chip in your mouth or a Frito-Lay product, it probably comes from this guy right here. So tell us where we're at. Well, right now, Michelle, we're in, into the uh, potato grading line, and we utilize that when we deliver potatoes for Frito-Lay. This is where we uh, load uh, the trailers that are on their way to the Frito-Lay plants. So you, uh, you have a big role in potato chip making. Well, we, we are one of maybe 80 growers that Frito-Lay has across the nation. And uh, we fit a niche down here. We're the first fresh crop coming off uh, in the, the season. And um, they, they utilize us uh, as the first fresh crop in their plants. So you're a really diversified farmer. So not only do you grow potato chips, you grow for a lot of major companies. Tell me some other major companies that you grow for. Okay, we're blessed to be deal with a lot of really good companies. In our carrots, we grow for Campbell Soups, for Gerber Baby Foods, and also Pixweed here locally in the valley. We grow um, for some Walmart through Bagley Produce in our watermelons. And I do have a partner, John Prukop, and James, his brother. And, uh, Amazing duo there. Done a story on them in my magazine. Excellent. They're very They're interesting. Great, great guys. People. Great guys. Uh, we grow, let's see, watermelons, carrots, uh, cabbage uh, for J&D produce. Uh, we grow some parsley and, and dill and cilantro. I think it's uh, safe to say you're the jack of all trades. Yes. Get it, Jack? Jack yes. of all trades? Yes. <laughs> well, we're excited today to have you show us around your farm what you grow, what's in the field today, and so we're excited. So this big open field full of dirt is so much more than just an open field full of dirt. Jack, tell us where we are. We are right in the middle of our farm. We are going through our uh, carrot planting process. Uh, so you're going for all the Easter, right? For all the Easter bunnies so we can feed them? <laughs> yes, all the Easter bunnies and, and pick sweet and Campbell soup. Uh, we are growing uh, a slicer carrot and a, a jumbo carrot. And so when we go to the grocery store, you know, we see the little ones, the bite-sized one that everyone loves to dip in your ranch, and we see the big ones, and then um, we see just your regular sized ones. So you said you grow the two. We grow the two. Um, most all of our, 99% of our carrots are processed carrots. We have a slicer carrot, which is an inch and a quarter in diameter. It's at, at its peak. And then we have a jumbo carrot, which is about two inches in diameter. Middle. And I see this big tractor here. What are we doing with, you know, this tractor that's back here, this John Deere, and then this case tractor? What is the difference between the two and what role, what role do they play in the carrot planting process? Okay, right now we're in the final phase of our planting. We've got our field fertilized. The, uh, the spray rig will put out a uh, weed protectant. Uh, the 
tractor in the, uh, the distance is shaping the bed so that we will have a flat, dry bed to plant the uh, carrot seed on, and the uh, tractor is way off in the distance there. So earlier this morning, we were at Blaine Rollins at Rollins Dusting Service, and we were talking a little bit about spraying and how farmers rely on, you know, on Blaine to spray their large fields. What spraying methods do you use? We utilize Blaine quite a bit. We've used Blaine for years, and Blaine is a very conscientious sprayer. Yes, he is. He does an excellent job for us, and he's a critical part of our operation. Uh, we both utilize both the ground application and the aerial like application. This, one you see here. this would be the ground application, Correct. and usually for our herbicides uh, and uh, insecticides where we have an opportunity, we we'll use the ground rig. Uh, Blaine covers a lot of acres real fast, and he does an excellent job in his coverage. Jack, when we were at Blaine's, I noticed the plane had nozzles on it that are coming out that spray the chemical and the fertilizer, the water. What is the difference between these against the plane? These uh, are very similar, although with the ground rig, typically you are putting out more water volume. And with the ground rig, uh, you can get more water volume, uh, which would create more droplets of protection and or more of a canopy uh, spread. Right now we're spraying on uh, bare ground and that's for the herbicide to try to uh, give us crop protection against weeds. So uh, get this, let's say this whole field, how long would it take to spray this whole field with the tractor? With this tractor, it would probably take two and a half hours to spray the whole field. With Blaine would take, you know, probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Depends on what kind of day you're having, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> This tractor has a tank and it, uh, we fill it with water and the, uh, the crop protection product that we're going to use. And this hose is a distribution system for the, the crop protectant uh, uh, liquid. These uh, things right here are different drop uh, nozzles which allow for different volumes depending on the application that you want to do. Um, one will put out five gallons, one will put out 15 gallons an acre, and the other will put out 20 gallons. So where you want to have more of coverage, uh, you put the 20 gallon uh, nozzle. Where you want to uh, cover a lot of ground and you don't need a lot of water with the product that you're carrying, you can use the five gallon uh, nozzle. Uh, we, this uh, boom covers 90 feet, uh, so it covers quite a, quite a big swath on each pass and uh, it, it gives you very accurate. Uh, it's got GPS monitoring, it's um, got a map in the cab which shows you that you're not missing a row but you're covering and, and you're connecting every row that's out there. Okay, what we have here, this is a bed shaper incorporator. And what we're doing with this implement is we are incorporating the crop protection for the weeds mechanically into the soil while shaping the bed for the planter, which is coming behind it. And so it'll, it'll make a nice, well-shaped bed for the planter to plant. So it helps with weeds. Can you use it to control the weeds in my garden? <laughs> <laughs> so we're a hop, a skip, and a jump away from one field to the next. So we've gone from carrots to now, what are we looking at, Jack? This is a field of purple hull dry edible peas. And we've uh, planted these uh, probably about 35, 40 days ago. And just now they're starting to form the pods. And I see here that there's a flower. So just like in our last episode, we learned that cotton has a flower and it falls off. Does the same thing happen with peas? These, this flower on the pea is where the uh, pods form and the flower uh, basically uh, dies to itself and, and produces the, the pods out of the, um, the place where the flower was. And so tell me, how many uh, peas should be in this pod? What is a healthy crop when you know you've, you're just a lucky guy? Yes, if we can have 15 peas in a pod, that's a very good crop. And so that's what we're hoping for right now. And so we have to, to, to take care of the crop, to nurture it, to water it, to spray it, 
to make sure that the peas will be a good quality. That's a great question. When you talked about spraying, or, or a great comment, what type of spraying would you use for this field? Would you use aerial or would you use ground spraying? We, it depends on the circumstance. Um, if we needed to cover a lot of acres really fast, we would use an aerial application. Or if we're really wet and we have a threat, we would use the aerial application. If we have some time, we will use a ground applicator. I have one more question for you. It's a very serious question. <laughs> How lucky of a guy are you when you have a field this full of black-eyed peas? Uh, it's hard to, you've got to, when it's in the bank, that's when you know. Okay. Because there's so many things can happen. Good answer. Yes. Good answer. Yeah. One of the threats we have in growing this crop is an insect called the curculio. And the curculio will want to feed on the peas inside the pod. So it will... Um, penetrate its feeding instrument into the pea itself and sometimes uh, it'll leave a cavity in that pea which is makes it not marketable and so it'll feed and on every pea in the pod if you are not ahead of the, the problem with your crop protection. I mean, the closer you get to the ground, there's a whole new population of species and insects and things in the ground and above the ground. And there's good guys, there's bad guys. There's a, a constant battle going on. Jack, I want to thank you for taking me around today, your farm. Uh, it is so diversified. And it's amazing to see God's hand at work and how amazing it is from a crop starting out as a little seed and blooming into something beautiful. So I am so blessed to be able to be here and thank you very much. Well, you're so welcome. It's been a pleasure and I'm equally blessed to work with God's creation to see his hand at work. Well, until next time, Jack, I guess I have to hit the road, but take your latest copy of the Ag Mag. We'll see y'all later and God bless. This week's episode is sponsored by 